We come from nice Oklahoma, 48 degrees this morning to 28 degrees and snowing here in Nebraska. Literally just got home. I'm in a rush to get the chicken waterers um, set up for the heated ones. I didn't think, oh man, I got a lot of mole action going on too with this, uh, this weather. But back to what I said, I gotta get the chicken water set up because I did not get heated waters set up in the chicken coop. My bad. I really didn't think it was gonna be that bad. But I forgot all my chains and stuff are set down here, coop area. So I have to get this. Oh, I have no lights either. Oh boy. It's getting dark out too. Close that up, got the chain. Now we just gotta get the heated water out of the shed. Whew, do we got a light? All right. I know I got heated water in here somewhere. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well. Isn't this just interesting? I thought my, I thought my heated water, oh, here it is. <laughs> you ask and shall receive. It was up on the top shelf, right where I, right where I put it. All right, things got a little dark on us last night. While we're doing all the water changing and getting the goat waters and heaters all set up, it got a little dark. So I shut the camera off, but we're gonna go check on them today. So yeah, so we were in a bit of a hurry last night. When we got home, we were driving into the snowstorm, which as you can see, it wasn't all that bad, but it dropped down to like 21 degrees. I think the high today was 28. So I wasn't expecting that weather when I took off to this meetup and uh, everybody was good to go as far as food and water when we left. Now we knew the day that we left on Sunday from Oklahoma that we had to get up here fairly quick. But we thought we had a little bit more time. It wasn't gonna be as bad, but when we got here, water was frozen. So through the night, well, through the darkness, I wound up running extension cords and getting everything all set up so we can put this heater in. Ooh, boy. Let's see how the goats. Well, you guys ate some. You guys been eating? Oh my gosh, guys. Look how fluffy Patches is. Oh, that is a fluffy goat. It's okay, mama. That is, you are one fluffy goat. He fluffy and damn. He is so fluffed out right now. You are ready for the winter, aren't you, boy? <laughs> I've never seen a goat so fluffy in my life. Mama don't look like that. Mama G. Mama G's a little fluffy. I can't see. I can't see boots right now. Maybe they'll come out. Let's see how this water did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a little dirty, but she, uh, she isn't frozen. That little floating water heater I purchased. That's uh that's actually doing pretty good. I actually think that water, I actually think that water is warm. Yeah, it's like a little mini hot tub. I think that's an 80 watt de-icer. Ah. Correction. That's a hundred that's a fifteen hundred watt de-icer. Yep. You could bathe in that water, but no, nah, I'm just kidding, it's not that hot. But it's more than enough. I actually might have to go down to a little bit of a smaller de-icer because we running we are running that off in the outlet that's on the exterior of our house obviously and we had some trouble tripping the breaker because we also have a chicken water that's heated up here too we never had any issues in the past but i think that thing's pulling some major major wattage obviously so we might have to get a smaller one what's up guys oh no <laughs> well i'm glad some girls came out so yes this bad boy right here, she was froze solid on the bottom. She wasn't frozen up top, but just mainly on the bottom she was frozen. So I knocked it all out, kicked it over, drained it. And then we got their little uh, two gallon waterer out 
Man, we even got moles. I don't know about you, but it seems like when the snow hits the ground, voles just go crazy. But we got their little two gallon water out. Let's go in here and check it out. Now these chickens, they were, they were thirsty. Woo! Hey, Junior, you coming in a little hot there, brother? How's your tail feathers? They coming in yet? Mm, don't look like it. Yeah. Where's Hey Hey? Where's Hey Hey at? You wanna know where Hey Hey's at? Is Hey Hey out here? Oh my gosh, look at Hey Hey. I totally missed Hey Hey, but he looks really cool all fluffed out. Damn, hey, hey, you looking good, brother? You looking good? Them feathers are coming in. Man, you should, you're looking straight hood. You got a little mohawk going on, a little spiky look. Man, brother, you, uh, you're looking kind of tough. You might be running this uh, gem pot before we know it. Junior, you just ain't getting it done, son. I don't know what it is with you, but you just, you just ain't getting it done. <laughs> Welcome to the new rooster in the in the flock holding it down baby he's actually looking pretty good <laughs> junior man i i think your day's just done man you need to get them tail feathers going on you need to shake them tail feathers shake it like a polaroid pitcher buddy all right let's go in and check this water real quick Oh, they have just been laying eggs on the ground. Would y'all stop laying your eggs on the ground? Seriously, you have a variety of boxes here and they are just amazingly fluffy with fresh, fresh straw. And you guys choose not to do it. They, they rather put their eggs on the, on the dirty floor. You guys are beyond me. How are you guys doing on water? Oh, you guys didn't drink as much as I thought you would. Now the biggest problem I have with running electrical and whatnot in my coop during the winter time is chickens are extremely curious and they tend to like to jump on the cords and unplug stuff. So if I run anything for a prolonged amount of time, I have to take electrical tape and wrap the plugins because they will make them come apart. I've tried zip ties, I've tried nailing to the wall here, and really securing this stuff, but they always find a way to get it unplugged, which is never cost anything. It's never hurt anybody from them being curious like that. It's just sometimes it makes you a little worried sometimes on the back of your head, like what did they get unplugged, huh? Cause you guys, you guys just, on, you're just some curious girls, huh? Oh, I love these buffs. What? I, well, girl, you need your nails done. You're looking like you're getting a little rough. The Buff Overton is my favorite chicken. I love the color and everything. My girls, they just love the cold weather. I don't know, everybody says the chickens stop laying when winter hits and cold weather hits, but my girls, they pick up production when the weather hits. These girls, I've always had the best egg production during the winter, and I don't know why. But that's how they roll, huh? Ooh. Oh, buck, 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 buck. You all need to start laying some Casbury eggs. Those things are delicious. And soon, these chickens are going to be heading to a very larger area. If you guys ain't seen that video, you can check out the link up top and you can see the future chicken run. But yeah, they have outgrown this spot. And this has been a chicken coop, well, at least ever since I've been here. And I think the owners, I think this has been a chicken run for about 30 years, honestly. We could be moving you to a brand new area. You could be large in the charge. It's going to take two roosters to run that yard. There is still hope for you, Whalen Jr., even though you just looking sad. That's one sad rooster, folks. Well, these chickens are doing pretty good. Let's go check on these goats again. I don't know what you guys all think about this, but when it gets snowy like this, I'm thinking about inside projects. Obviously, I got the truck inside, and I got a lot of shop projects I can do, but... I always get the itch to start growing stuff and I think I'm going to do an herb garden indoors this year. I don't know. It was just a thought. Oh, ho, ho, look at you, boy. Boots, you fluffy too, man. 
Look how fluffy you are. Looking good, bud. Yeah. Man, you guys are all fluffed out. How you guys doing? <laughs> oh. You guys looking good in here? How's it set up in here? I put a new bell of hay before we took we took off and they look like they're doing good on that. Maybe if we can get them outside with a little chow. You guys want some chow? They don't like the camera so much. When I put this camera away, they kind of turn into some different goats, honestly. But Oh, you guys come out for some food, huh? You boys looking thick. That's a thick boy. So this winter, I'm being sure to give them a little bit of a sweet feed, a little bit of a, I don't know, I, what I consider goat junk food because I think they need that those extra calories this winter. When it gets cold like this, they need to, they need to sit there and they need to have a lot of calories going through their body so they can stay warm. So there's a little bit of that goat sweet feed, uh, not too much of it, but I mix it in with their regular goat pellet feed. And then we're, ob we're obviously putting a lot of mineral on their feed as well. They do have a mineral bucket, but I, I don't understand why they don't like using it. I've had that and they have not gone through one of those mineral buckets. I think I'm just gonna, I might just, I might just toss it out. They don't ever touch it. But they occasionally they will touch it. There's one thing I wanted to mention is because I know a lot of people probably do what I do, and uh, that's run extension cords to the yard to wherever they need to put power at to run waters during the winter and whatnot. So what we do here is we run an outdoor cord that is made for being outdoors. That's important. You can run, you know, some cheap to an extent extension cords but best device best case scenario buy a good extension cord that is at a minimum 12 gauge wire because people don't realize the distance that they're going from their house to wherever they're trying to power something up at that draws a lot of current and that's a lot of amps especially if you're running heaters now your breaker system inside your house is gonna prevent anything from burning up. But God forbid it doesn't, that extension cord is gonna get really hot and melt. If you're running a lot of juice through extension cord, you feel it, you can physically feel it, that thing getting hot, it's something, you've got it overloaded. So if you're gonna run waters with extension cords, get outdoor extension cords. They usually come with a very good plug-in that's made to be outdoors. They come with a lighted plug-in as well. So you can tell if they're working or not. So you don't have to go outside and check waters. You just look out there and make sure that plug is glowing. And then obviously go check your waters later, but you don't have to do it every day. Now those little plastic tubs, they work pretty good for little temporary housing or possibly permanent housing for goats. There's nothing wrong with them. My only concern with them is that they're not ventilated enough. And when I say that, cause you guys are like, there's a big hole in the front of that mic. What do you mean it's not ventilated? Well, when you breathe, when you and I breathe, and the same goes for animals, because you know, they have lungs just like us, we expel moisture. Now that moisture needs to get out of where you're sleeping or staying at, or it collects in the area you're in. And a plastic tub is perfect for catching all that moisture if it's not ventilated out through the top. So where I'm getting at with this, things start getting moist, high humidity in the area, it starts to drip. It drips on your goats, drips on your bedding, it's a bad case scenario for everything. The same thing applies with chickens, ventilated coops. Everything has to have good ventilation. Now with this, I have a lid up top here that I usually run a bucket on. That bucket is sitting over there in the grass. We have to go grab it and put that bucket on there. So we'll just put that cap on there for now. But we gotta be sure to put that bucket over that hole. So their future housing area is gonna be that log cabin that those chickens are living in right now. And that in itself 
is gonna work really good for these goats. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a loft up top so they'll be able to stay up high, low, and whatnot. And I wanna put a lean-to outside so they don't have to go inside of a house to sleep. They'll have a nice open lean-to, plenty of hay, and then we're gonna put a loft in there so we can store our bells of uh, straw and alfalfa. So I don't either have to keep in the garage or the barn or in tubs like that outside. We can stick them right in their loft and we can access them when they need them. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. You know, I'm gonna try to do a lot more short videos like this. Just give you guys an idea of what's going on out here on the homestead and let you know how we're doing. So I appreciate you guys watching and be sure, like the video and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode, guys. See you later.